Hello Yoga Place North community, I hope you're well today. I'm going to show you a couple more poses using a chair to help you improve your practice. Just be mindful of the kind of chair that you're using, that it is a stable chair. Also think about the height of the chair. If you're quite tall, you may need a couple of blankets to add on to the chair so that you can get the right positioning for your uh, height. So the pose I'm going to look at first is Utita Pars Bokanasana. So I've got the chair at a slight angle. I'm going to place my foot over the edge and then I'm going to kind of come down and sit my bottom. So my bottom's half on and half off. So it's being supported under the thigh here. And then from here, I'm going to press into that back leg. So you're not kind of bearing and sitting all the way down. We have to use the legs still, even though we're using a chair. The chair just helps us get a better position and a better feel for the pose. First thing I want you to notice is those of you who've been practicing this pose without a chair, very often you can sink into this side. So this hip sinks down and you're overworking in certain areas of your body. Whereas when you use a chair, if you really move this hip in, it makes you lift this hip up, which frees up the hip joint here, making it easier for you to maintain this open knee alignment. So your knees out, straight over the middle toes here. Now at the same time, you can work on pushing the back heel down and pressing back in your thighs. So you really get a good sense of the pelvis is supporting you here. Your buttocks will switch on without you having to do anything and your pelvis is lifted. Yeah, so you can actually use the back of your chair here to help you maintain that lift of your chest if you're struggling. Then to come down, you've got a chair leg to hold on to at the back here. You can put your hand on the front of the chair and now we can turn, we can use the chair to help us rotate. So as the legs keep working, we're using the chair to get this turning of the torso, which is what's needed in the pose. Again, when we're doing it without the pose, we're so busy thinking about the legs and then we come over and we can kind of collapse the chest into the pose. So from here, rotating, getting this feeling of how much your legs have to work so that you can now access the spine. If the legs don't work, the spine won't rotate because it's got nothing to work on top of. So the foundations need to be firm for you to then be able to rotate your spine here. Okay, so that's one way that you could use the chair in that pose. The other way you could use it, and I'm going to change sides, is to put your chair this way, like I did in the previous video, lining your foot up here and extending back. So we're trying to open this hip and line our thigh up to the front edge here. Thinking about your heels or your heel and instep being in line, which is how we do the pose normally. So again, just feeling here, we can't sit. Well, we don't, we can sit, but we don't want to be dropping in here. I want you to bring your awareness here into this hip to help you move down in this side of your body. From here, so I'm using uh, the chair as a guide, but I'm not just sitting on the chair. From here, I'm coming over. Again, I can use the chair leg. Now I'm gonna take this hand back to find the back of the chair. So in the first way, it was to help you rotate. So we can get that action rotating still, but what it does here is help your shoulders. So my shoulder's currently coming forward. I'm gonna keep pressing in the feet and working, rotate the body and roll my shoulder back, holding the back of the chair. And that just gives you a really good sense of what your torso should be doing You've got some support and stability from the chair, but you're not completely relying on it. Your legs have to be active. And then once you've got that feeling, you could even try releasing the hand and bringing it over. So we've got a few options there with the chair. Okay. And then come back up. But really noticing it's this hip that's coming down. When you've got a chair, you can't, it's harder for you to do this because it hurts even more. So it's making you more aware of how to Use the hips and make the hips descend evenly. Okay, so that's um, Pars Vakanasana. Now I'm going to bring you into um, Utkatasana. Chair pose. <laughs> so feet together. A couple of ways you can use a chair in this instance. So if it's just helping you get the alignment, you can have the chair behind you because you're going to aim to get your buttocks to come here. So in this pose normally, what we tend to see is this, yeah? So our chest drops down, our bottom goes back. 
What we want to see is this kind of feeling. So our buttocks are coming down to the seat here, not back on the chair there, okay? So taking the arms up, planting your feet, thinking of the knees squeezing together. Your bottom does go back, so your kind of weight's in your heels and you're just kissing the chair here, okay? And then you can grip, lift and come up. And again, obviously your arms, you're trying to keep them back as much as you can. So not allowing the chest to drop too much, but taking your weight into your heels, finding the seat of the chair, and releasing back up. So this is really gonna give you some strength benefits as well. Now I know there's quite a few people who struggle with this because of the strength or lack of the strength at the moment in this pose, in the thighs. So what we can do here, we can sit on the edge of the chair. You bring your heels back, so we're not sitting with our heels forward. You're bringing your heels back, you're sitting on the edge of the chair and you're extending and lifting up. Now I really have to be able to press the heels down. I start to feel as I'm gonna stand up so your body will naturally come forward here. Yeah, as you go to try to stand up, you can't stand up from here. So your body, as you go to stand up, will naturally start to come forward. So allow that to happen, push into your heels and then come up. You can release your hands, you can bring yourself back on the chair, stretch up, come into that position where you're naturally coming forward, grip the knees together, push into the heels, and then lift up. So you have a little pause this time, and then coming down again. So we keep practicing it. Come forward. Now this time, can you have a longer pause? Can you rise up? Can you hold it before you drive upwards? Yeah, so it's really good to kind of get this practice. It's the strength here in your ankles, your thighs. So a number of ways to help you build that strength up. And again, just practicing, just coming, getting this feeling, because there's the pose right there. Yeah, so we're not doing this, which is kind of when we're not using chairs, you kind of see people doing this pose. So it's not that action. It really gives you a sense of, oh, right, yeah, my buttocks are, are coming down more towards my heels, not towards the back. So you can really feel when you're here, the picture of the pose. Okay. Good, all right. And then the other one I want to show you is Virabhadrasana One, Warrior One pose. And in this pose, you'll need a wall as well as the chair. Now, ideally for this pose, you do need a chair with no back in it, okay? The other two, you could get away with one that's a more solid back, but this one, because we're gonna take our leg through here, it has to have a chair with no back. So you're gonna step forward with my right leg, or your right leg, and we're gonna then place the heel on the wall behind us, okay? So again, when I use the chair, the chair is in the back of the knee here. So it's supporting the whole length of my thigh. If you're taller, you might need a, an extra block or a folded blanket underneath just to lift you up a little bit. So now I'm going to press the, the left heel into the, the wall and push the left thigh up. Now as I do that, this hip wants to turn because we're, most of us are quite tight here, myself included. Two ways that this chair can be used, it's to help with the leg positioning, but it's also to help you get the chest and the tailbone in without any pushing in the back. But first working on this leg again, so I'm going to push the thigh back and I'm going to roll this thigh from the inner thigh to the outer thigh. Yeah, so you're really feeling as though you're rolling that left leg. You then move your buttock in, but at the same time you're trying to push your thigh back. So I'm trying to move the tailbone and buttock forward, but I'm still trying to maintain and extend this thigh back. So this is gonna be a huge stretch. And over time it will get easier and better for you. At first you might be like, I can't even straighten my back leg, okay? Don't worry, just keep working with it. It is a massive stretch here, which is what we absolutely need, yeah? So keep that rotation, buttocks, so we're not, this is why I'm saying buttocks, because this is what you'll want to do. So press your back leg back, then lift yourself up. I'm pushing upwards, backwards with the leg, tailbone in, so I'm lifting here at the front, and the back of the chair can help you maintain that lift here. So I'm really thinking of the spine shooting up, I'm moving the tailbone in, I'm pressing the thigh back, and I'm working in the pose. Now, if you really feel you're getting it, you can then extend your arms up. 
yeah and then release and then relax so i wasn't sitting down i was using the legs to help me obviously again strength elements you might find that quite hard to maintain so i'm going to change legs so i'm hooking the knee at the back so again if you are just finding it hard because of strength then you may find that you're sitting down a little bit more at the moment. Roll that back leg just like we did, okay? So I'm trying to help myself lift. So I'm moving the, the, the belly and the hip here, I'm moving it up and back. I'm drawing the belly slightly back, okay? Now I'm working the back leg, I'm rotating it in. So one size feels very different to the other for me, um, having injured this uh, left uh, right side before. So I'm lifting, I'm trying to now just lift up. So that can, this is the strength bit. Can you just push and lift a little bit? Could you hold yourself here a little bit? Like I said, those of you who are stronger, you can go for the full pose, but those of you who are struggling with strength, you can just press lift. Just feel the muscles engage, feel the body, feel the lifting action and how much you have to work into your feet, then your legs to lift your spine up by using the chair as well. And then you can release. And then carefully stepping yourself back out. I'm going to add in a little twist here. It's a little bonus pose for you. So again, I'm going to have the chair to the right side, feet on the floor. I'm going to turn to the back of the chair. Try to keep my feet um, connected and the knees straight. Inhale up, roll the shoulder, exhale, turn. Let the belly breathe. Let the belly move as you breathe. Inhale up, exhale, turn. So this is a lovely one again, if you kind of spend a lot of time at an office desk, it's really nice to do this one as well. And then turn, you can even turn your head all the way back. And then maintain your lift as you come back. You can turn all the way around. So again, if you find that you've got a chair that makes you tip, then you'd fold a blanket and place it underneath this side. So you're trying to keep the hips nice and level. And then you're gonna to turn to the other side, maintain that lift through the spine, lifting up, exhale, turn. So I'm using the back of the chair to help me turn, squeezing the knees together, being conscious that the, the knees are staying in line. Inhale up, exhale, turn. So I'm using the breath to help me in this pose. Inhale up, exhale, turn. And then once you feel that the spine, the torso is turning, you can then rotate your head as well. Feeling that lovely feeling through the whole of the torso. Maintain the lift as you come back. And then release. So there we go. Just a couple of poses for you to work with. Uh, remember, these poses are all foundation poses. I've done a few videos um, on these foundation poses without chairs. So if you haven't yet caught up with those, then go ahead back into the video library, go earlier on and you will find um, the foundation poses done without a chair. So the chair can be used for two reasons. It can help you improve your pose. Or if you are, like I said, trying to build strength, you can't move the same, the, the chair can access the pose for you, can help you understand the pose, help you have the ability to do the pose. So those of you who are struggling with knee problems or find yourself a little bit less mobile, this chair option is a perfect way for you to do some practice. I hope that you find that helpful. And please check out some more videos that I've done for you um, in the meditation section as well. And... Hopefully, I'll say, see you here again soon. Don't forget to share it, like it, share it with your friends and make sure that you've subscribed to my channel. Thank you very much for joining today. Bye-bye.